He's got to feel his way. <laughs> He's so sweet. Jack was found by one of our local shelter partners in a road suspected to have been hit by a car. He was in very critical condition and they called us right away and we were able to get him into our program and get him to the emergency vet. They were able to perform a full CT scan and they did find some pretty significant skull fractures. The good news with those is that none of them required surgery, so he would just need rest, nutritional support, and some pain medication as those skull fractures healed. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, due to the trauma from the hit by car, Jack's eyes were damaged beyond repair and had to be removed. But ever since then, he's been in a foster home, been doing fantastic. He is getting his bearings and learning how to get around with no eyes, and he's been doing incredible. When I first saw him, I didn't even notice he was blind. I just thought, you know, he's a good cat. He deserves to be loved. It doesn't matter if he's blind or anything else, he deserves a home a place to look careful in. And so we thought, we can do that. I didn't know anything about it until Dad came out. He's like, so there's this cat. I'm like, OK. So, OK. okay. We were a little nervous. What do we need to do different? We had to go through our house and eliminate any possibility of him getting trapped. We had him in a kennel at the very beginning. He was in just a little portable kennel so the other cats could kind of get around and where they could be protected, but they can see each other, they can smell each other. Obviously, Jack can't see them, but he can smell them and sense them without having physical contact. That took about three days, and he was done in the kennel. And he got out, and he just wanders the house. He wants to know everything about the house and where things are. Yeah, he's curious. It's learning how to make his life the best it could be. And so it's developing the patience of making sure he knows he can get down the steps, making sure he knows where the steps are to get back up so he can get to his food and water and things. You know, that's the long process. We have to be more alert and more cautious mm -hmm. uh, and, and keep track of where he's at so that he doesn't get trapped somewhere. And it just puts a little more responsibility on us. He tends to be a little skittish to something unexpected. In order to prevent him from being startled, that's where I actually got the idea of using verbal cues that he could associate with an action. He can hear that we're around him and we talk to him, but he doesn't know I'm leaning over him to touch him. And so we started using the verbal cue touch, followed by petting or whatever, so that he knows that when we say that, or we say Jack touch, then the next thing that's gonna happen is he's going to have a physical contact. And he picked that up very, very quickly. And we just felt like he deserved to have the best life he could have. He needed to have a home where he could be safe. Yeah.